What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Bless. I got my co-host with the most to the left of me, Mr. Let Me Know. And this is the Moment of Truth podcast. Right now, I got a very special guest in the building, an OG in the city, well-deserved title, a guy I grew up hearing uh, had a bit of a notorious name in these streets. Um, some things he's proud of, some things he might not be. Um, it's a heavy introduction for a very interesting individual. You deserve it all. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Eddie, Crazy Eddie, OG originator of 514 Productions. Correct yo, yo, me if yo, I'm yo, wrong. Yo, yo, yep. Introduce yep. yourself to those who might not be familiar with uh, you, please. Crazy Eddie, man, from 514 Productions, Crazy Productions. Yeah, Welcome. man. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, um, rumor has it. Mm, that Mr. Crazy Eddie, on top of on top of being a real nut job, um, <laughs> founded yeah. uh, the early rave scene in Montreal, and what would become uh, probably the Studio Fifty Four of Montreal. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Hands yep. down, and this is not from me or you. Mm -hmm. This is just popular opinion. Uh, one of the great uh, nightclubs in North America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for uh, sure. In the last yeah. few uh, decades, uh, it's funny. So I, I was just thinking of that, like, dri like driving up my way, or like driving over here, that we like, like Sona is the Studio Fifty, is our Studio. Oh, 54, it definitely. You is. know, we had, like I have so many stories that you're gonna be it, like, what the? It it, de F, it definitely know? is, and we're definitely <laughs> you know gonna get I'm into saying, all of that. But I, but but let me just uh, just one thing is I'm not the originator of the rave scene in Montreal. I'm, one of. I'm in the one of, but one before of. me there was others, and and you know, like I want to give them uh, a big shout out, like Tiga, oh yeah. Boozy, yeah. you know, those guys were the ones that shout I shout out Tiga yeah. and his manager Oliver Sassy. Oliver Twist. I used Twist, to do a lot yeah. of business with Oliver. He yeah. was uh, he was real cool yeah. and a great guy. Um, take us on how you started, and then we'll get to the wild <sighs> ride of what it became. Here Where did you go. grow up? You know how I started in the club scene was, man. I, you know. I uh, I passed the vacuum at Metropolis. I, right. I I passed the mop on the dance floor. Good for uh, you. I painted the joint, the whole fucking you club. Really started I painted. At the, I started. At the yeah, yeah. Worked your way up. Well, it, also, like I didn't I didn't know what what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't. You know what I mean? I was just like some kid. I hated school. I was in gangs. You know, like like fuck yeah. it. You know, I got a job painting. That's it. So I, that's how it started. Like I was at I was at the club. I was at Metropolis one day, and they were like, "Oh, you want to go pass out some flyers?" I'm like, "Yeah, okay." You want to go sell some tickets? Yeah, okay. You want to do security? Yeah, no problem. I did everything. Like, yeah. Whatever they asked me, I was doing. Got you. So I met. Uh, <clears throat> and I did. I, I I saw all the craziest shows for free. Uh, I was that was worth it alone. Yeah, right? yeah. I was like doing stage security. I was like a buck twenty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, but you were like, nice with the baton. <laughs> not even. I would just throw people off the stage, <laughs> like for real. Like people would climb on stage, and I would like, kick them off. And I was like, ah, power, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, then I started hanging out um, in clubs, and 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 like you know, like top forty clubs. And then when I discovered the first rave I went to, a friend of mine brought me to H two O, the first rave that was. It was busted in, in Montreal. It was in the news and everything. Um, I walked in there. And I was there 10 minutes and the, the cops busted the place. And I was like, wow, I love this. <laughs> you, know, I was like, you know, this is illegal. Okay, I'm in. Um, what, what year are we talking? 92, 93. Okay. 92, 93. So I, yeah, I started like myself. Uh, I started a company called Crazy Productions uh, in 93. And then 514 was in 94. Okay, so you start. I, I think like, like my dates might be. Uh, might so you be, start uh, getting your feet wet, so to speak. You know, uh, dabbling and throwing like uh, warehouse parties, raves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, well, actually, Loft at parties. first, at first, how it started is I would um, like every other production company would uh, would I, I would pass out flyers for them. I would promote for them. Mm -hmm. okay. Street promoter. Yeah, street promoter. Mm -hmm. Street level promotion. And then one day I was like, man, I really wanna. I wanna get involved with you guys more i don't mm. want to just be like a flyer boy i want to sure. i want to promote i want to produce and they were like no no man we don't we don't need that we don't I'm like okay so one day um two brothers just just, just approached me and said hey you want to we hear about you all the time you want to you want to you want to produce a, we want we want to produce a party with you I'm like man let's do it so that was the first swirl we did at uh, palais des congrès nice we had like three thousand people nice. and i promoted the fuck out of it the fuck swirl out of it. 
anybody who remembers Swirl, <clears throat> don't be shy to drop a comment. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that attended Swirl. Yeah, yeah. Especially that like, fir yeah. those first few the were first, legendary. Yeah. And, uh, but before that, before I start promoting uh, events with 514, uh, well, before it was Crazy Productions and Spectral Productions. It was, 514 didn't exist yet. Yeah. Um, before that, I was, I, was, uh, doing, I was organizing bus trips to New York, to Boston, to oh. Philly. Because when the scene first started here, there was no clubs. Gotcha. Uh, we had like Thursday night was Angels. That's yep. it. Right. Love the yeah. Angels. Yeah, yeah. Yep. it was amazing. I was up uh, there. Yeah. So thir that's all we had. Um, Me and Ray Ray were up there. Shout out to Ray Ray. Yeah, Ray Ray. Um, and... Uh, you know, like we, we had this crew of like 100, 200, 300 people that we craved this music, techno, house music, you know, drum and bass, mm. you know. So we just, I just booked like buses and I'm talking about like Greyhound buses, not, not yeah. it's not a yellow bus, you yeah. know. And we go down to New York, party all night, get on the bus, come back home. That's dope. You know what? You should do that again. This, the, well, the thing is today it wouldn't work because DJs come to the city now. You know what I mean? Like, there's something going on every week now in the city. True. You know what I mean? We definitely have a luxury that we didn't have. But that being said, I think there's still a market for like a sense of community. I would where love a to. group vibe yeah. would go for yeah. a weekend, like yeah. 200 Montrealers. I even to a did. City. I even did. Uh, uh, one of my friends because I had like a. Um, uh, like I had connections all over the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So uh, a friend of mine from New Jersey, uh, he booked this event called. Um, called fiesta okay. on a cruise ship bro Dope. in miami Dope. so we had promoters from all over the east coast and and we went on a cruise ship for like seven days you know wow. That's so and we amazing. raved on we raved on a, on a and, and let me tell you a really funny story why we chose that particular uh cruise ship it was called ecstasy <laughs> No, no more Nuff explanation said. needed. <laughs> <Nuff said. laughs> I just remember a certain young man, me, walking on the deck at night. And at night, it's, everything's closed, but there's like security everywhere. And I, I remember walking to a security guy going, hey, the ecstasy is um, amazing. <laughs> He's like, si, senor, si, senor. Thank you. Gracias. You're like, like, oh, yes, it will be. Yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, like we were kids, man. We're like yeah. 17, 18 years old on a cruise ship in Miami. I will say and, that you know, um, you're a couple years older than me, but we were really lucky to be part of the tail end of the craziest time in yeah, Montreal. Yeah. Because I will say that, you know, um, it's not what it was. No, and we were no, lucky no, no, that, no. you know, we were, we were part of a, a magical time yeah, yeah, where everything, everything was, was tolerated. New. Everything was new. Everything was you new know? and fresh yeah. and tolerated. Yeah. Even I would long. love to hear the story of like how Sona came about. Well, we're going to get there. So. I'm very curious. Like I'm like antsy at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> so after you start organizing these kind of <clears throat> special events, these one-offs yeah. out of town. Yeah. Well, after um, Swirl. I yeah, think. after Swirl, what happened is we, I continued doing a couple of bus trips still. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I got really busy because we started promoting. We started doing like four or five events a year, like big events. Yeah. What were uh, the names of those events? Uh, well, the ones that we did regularly uh was cream mm -hmm. uh, that was the first urban and electronic music festival in Montreal. i believe tony touch maybe played at that uh no not at cream tony touch played sona and he played maybe he played a cream later on yeah because my memory is a bit you know what yeah, i mean yeah, like yeah. Uh, i've done some Wait, too many cruise ships <laughs> too many cruise ships too many uh, <laughs> bats to the head man i'm telling you, like like I, you know like i had a we'll rough get life there too. you know so um Tony Touch, I, I, I met, uh, played for us a few times, so he might have been on one. Like people, I have a friend of mine, Quan, your Quan Star in the house. Yeah. He's like the, 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 the historian. The, bro. Yeah. If I go Shout on Facebook Quan. and Shout I say, Quan. and I say, this was in 93, right away. No, Eddie, it's 94. I'm like, yeah. fuck, man. He's your yeah. stat guy. I, I love him and I hate him. <laughs> it's like, shut up, you know, come on, man. But in, like, in, he'll know like every date and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyways. so with the DJs playing, with, I, I, I forget, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have flyers at home that I, oh, then I remember, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, so we had Cream, um, Ballon Blanc, we did the first, f the first four Ballon Blancs with, with, oh, with wow. us, then, you know, we had like um, legal issues, legal issues with other people, so whatever, you know, we did that celebration every year, was the new, which was new the Year's New Year's Eve, Eve. Uh, at one point we had Stamina, but we didn't do that one again. Uh, a few like we did like a bunch of, of events and then when we when we did the first cream sona was already open but it wasn't under us it wasn't under 514 production okay who and was the original owners of sona do you remember well um tiga was part of tiga the, was yeah. part of it I and when that. we 
and other promoters i forget i think it was the the five the five production crew or something i, I forget the names i remember the guys like it was uh, J- james uh, james forbes okay. and, and all these cats and uh, and unfortunately and they were like the the the, the premier like the, the like the pioneers of the rave scene yes. but unfortunately with sona they didn't they didn't they didn't they, it, it didn't work mm-hmm. no they didn't like for whatever reason it wasn't it, time yet maybe maybe right but, i feel like yeah. they had you, a vision yeah, yeah they had a but. certain vision and and like uh, for the first year, man, Sona was about to close. Sona mm-hmm. was about to close the door, and the o- the real owner, like the owner who, who put the money yeah. in, called us for a meeting and said, "You know, what, what do you can want? We do? What do you want?" So and you came said, in early after the first year. Yeah, uh, and then and no, like 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 like, like no joke. Uh, first night we opened, we reopened. We it didn't stop. Like I we remember. were on, we were on fire. Like every it was Friday, Saturday. Every Friday, Saturday, on fire. Eddie, I was 15 years old, and this is one of the first clubs that I go to <coughs> because Bro. I'm rapping and because yeah, yeah, I have connections yeah. with Ray Ray. Yeah, they sneak in a child. 15 yeah, yeah. years old with Bro, my back. track at 15 was playing for us. It was pretty pretty much just me and Eight Track <laughs> that know? were allowed yeah. to go in. Yeah. And when I say allowed to go in, and we covered this on one of the first episodes okay. with White Sane, getting in. And I don't want to go too deep into it, but getting into Sona was a big deal for grown process. men. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So for an underage kid to be there, yeah, yeah, it was sure. like unheard yeah. of. Like little girls in my high school you wanted to, to go out with me <laughs> because they heard I could get into Sona. Wow. And let me tell you, it was true. Yeah. Because yeah. a gentleman like this and Ray uh, Ray and all uh, the guys, you know, and there was a respect for yeah. like people in the scene yeah so there was me you know who was doing the rap thing there was a track doing the dj thing there was tiga yeah. you know who was a pioneer in, in in the electronic side and his manager oliver sassy mm. then there was crazy eddie mm. with 514 productions on the hip-hop side you had ray ray and red red yeah then yeah. quite sane came later so we were like a core um <clears throat> of early people you know who were really um, by default, putting on for the city because we were just and in love with this yeah, culture. Yeah, 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 and that, that was it. It was like, it was like, uh, you know, I, I like I sucked at school. I so suck. I. I sucked at sports, man. You know, mm-hmm. but this thing, like, this I just fell in. I fell into this. I was like, hey, man, I'm good at this. Yeah. You know, it gave and definitely, and you know what, it gave an outlet for guys like us. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something like creative and positive to do <laughs> yeah. instead of getting into you know trouble all the time and you know well, let me tell you something um before i got into to the music to, to the house music to the techno to the, the mm-hmm. even the hip-hop and mm-hmm. i was a fucking tug yeah. i was in the gangs i was you know what i mean i was hustling on the street i remember hearing <laughs> your name you know and here we people, go and people would you know <laughs> talk about you as if you were like this uh this Notorious. bad guy but my experiences with him was he's such it, a sweetheart i'm like it, that's listen, my brother it, yeah, like what yeah. are you talking about it, like it, why are you saying <laughs> he came down with the thing in his underwear and <laughs> this happened and and that's we'll leave it I there oh man I I think you know i don't know if you even know what i'm alluding to but I you know we so. stopped there i think so i think but so. we ran in a lot of the same circles but, but he was older than but me. the thing is this like you get you get oh well it's like if if you treat me with, with, with respect that's what absolutely. you get if you think i'm a punk i'm a fucking punk you out absolutely and still today it's like that but i'm much that's more, the era we came from yeah that's where i'm from like you know what i mean the era we and came from was you got what you gave yeah, and if exactly. you gave something stupid yeah you got you had yeah, to yeah. get it back yeah, twice. Yeah. yeah and the thing is what i what i wanted to say is when i discovered like the house music and and this and this culture and this 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 after hour scene mm-hmm. and that, that even that even like funk music and mm-hmm. jazz and like that music yeah. just put love in me. You know what I mean? Like That's I was dope. like, I just like, I, I'm, I'm still tug, bro. I'm <laughs> fucking tugged out. But I was like, okay, I don't need to beat everyone. Up. Tugs need yeah. love too. You know, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was like, I was like a ticking time bomb. And yeah. then when, when I start, I, I, I'm telling you honestly, I did ecstasy. I started dancing. I was like, oh my god, what the fuck? It was like what therapy. The it was it like was therapy. It was therapy. It was therapy. And, and and you know what? A lot of a lot of kids back then needed. Um, some decent outlets because yeah. everybody was getting into trouble and the climate and the culture, Lemmy, was kind of everybody measuring each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. In terms of who could do, who could be better. Well, okay. You I, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you a really, really funny story. I'm at, uh, on Saint Laurent in front of Angels, okay? And everybody mm-hmm. on the street knows me. Mm-hmm. And there's a new doorman at Angels. 
Oh, they were and, such fuckers yeah. sometimes. And Lobster, my, my boy Lobster, shout walks out, by. He goes, he goes, he goes yo, what up, Lobster. crazy? I'm like, yo, what's up? Gives me a hug, <laughs> walks by. The doorman goes, oh, you're Crazy Eddie? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I heard of you. So once someone tells me that, I, I step back. He goes, like, I'd like, I, hear? He goes I'd, I'd like to try you one day. You know what I did? I knocked him the fuck out one punch. I said, well, you fucking <laughs> lost, bro. You just lost, you know? You know, there was a lot of um, <laughs> <laughs> sick individuals that both Sona later yeah. and um, angels were hiring for security. And, and you know, we still have a lot oh, of mutual man. friends that, you know, worked at these establishments. Yeah. But because, you know, it's no secret, the climate, you know, there was a biker war that just yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Our no, city we were, was... We were, in, we were in deep in yeah. the biker war. At, uh, yeah, at that, at that uh, exactly. That Sorry. See, yeah. that's me off That was dates. like, it was biker war time. And... So right. it, mid, you know the mid nineties, right? Yeah, yeah. The streets are a volatile place, and yeah. I remember being a little ass kid. You know, it was a lot scary. Like there was grown, yeah, yeah. there was gunshots on the men, street, and man. And you know, there was always trouble. Yeah. So, um, these, and, were, and we're talking about, like you said, serious men. Yes, yes. These guys are, were like, like packing, <laughs> and we're fighting these guys, and we're like, man, I'm I'm seventeen years old. I'm fighting a fucking grown man with, with a gun. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you and know, and, and and to the credit of the guys that you know wanted to try you they were risking their lives being at the door because oh, if yeah. you didn't let in a guy who was patched or whatever the story yeah, yeah. was he come back he come back and yeah. and, and might do and something it, and crazy. it happened and it, and it happened a it lot happened many times you know, i have a lot of friends that you know are no are no yeah. longer here with us yeah you know god because, bless them. yeah god yeah. bless everybody who passed but, uh, but just but just to say that like like but I just mean like to give a context. Maybe the guy wasn't like particularly wanting to fuck with you. No, but, but it's just, he was so like overwhelmed, and they were. It wasn't like now where if you're a doorman and you have to throw someone out and they want to come back, they're calling the cops yeah, right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, they weren't stopping the fight or escorting you out. They were beating the fuck yeah, out yeah, of you. Yeah, they were beating and you throwing up. you yeah, down yeah. the stairs. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So climate was different, mm, yeah. and the so level, when the guy said that to me. You know, like like, like 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 the tug came out. Yeah. I'm like, boom, knocked him out. I said, you lose. And then they, they, they well, they and they kicked him out. I said, don't ever come back on the street again. Yeah. And not because I'm like, like you know, like. But you paid your dues. You paid your dues. Yeah, I'm still paying. I'm still paying. <laughs> we all are. We're still paying for the dumb shit. We yeah, did, yeah, for sure, for but sure. But I remember. So I remember as a, as a kid coming up in the hip hop scene, coming up in the streets. I would always <laughs> bump into this gentleman, and you know, he would always keep an eye on me. And yeah, yeah. later. Um, me and his uh, younger brother become very close and his younger brother ends up doing security for me and Guru every mm -hmm. time we were in town. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just had this long lasting friendship and I always was curious, Eddie, about how the 514 thing took place. Like, how, like, what did you credit the success of Sona blowing up when you did the relaunch? Um, you know what? It, it's like, we had um, a good team. Uh, you know, we we were five. Um, Who like else the, was on the team? It was me, me, and then it was me again. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it was um, Ricardo, his brother Daniel. Ricardo Cordero. Yeah, the Corderos. The Cordero brothers. <laughs> <laughs> long I'm story. sure you guys have long, 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 long yeah. stories. So, uh, JC, JC Duliep, JC. I just invited JC on yeah? the show a little cool. while ago. Did he come? He, he didn't come oh, yet, okay, I just, no, okay. this week. And Driss, Driss Bekri yes. and me. So we're five of us. At first it was Yaki also, but he didn't, he didn't stay too long. Um, so I think like we add uh, each our, our elements and that's what made it a success. Because uh, I brought in a certain element, everyone brought in something. Yeah. And that's what happened. Because if I think, I, I'm sure 100% that if you would have taken any one of us out of that equation, it wouldn't have worked. Oh yeah, I'm sure. It I'm was sure, definitely sure, sure. a unique dynamic yeah. and and a crazy energy, yeah. crazy vibe when you would come in there. For those who aren't from Montreal, um, Sona ends up becoming with Paris and Berlin yeah. and yeah. London and New York one of the top spots yeah. uh, for the how for the house world. Yeah. Um, after you know, hours. after hours. Not just no, after no, hours. No, no, like, no. Because we had a bar. Bro, like it opened from ten bro, to ten. We had. Right, no, but I'm asking, called. is it the after hours that was the it was the all of, it was the whole the whole thing because okay. we had like the bar mm -hmm. for uh, uh, with Alco, bar. Like the, the booze bar we had uh, the after hours the after hour uh, space the warehouse and then downstairs we had a lounge which was like hip hop drum and bass that's where I spent all my time you know what I mean so all that I mean all that combined made it but there the wasn't Sona universe, there wasn't know? a big name from Paul Oakenfold to Tiesto that that wasn't regularly played. oh yeah, yeah, Sona yeah. we had the point, we had right? the biggest the biggest name the biggest names in the industry at that time went through Sona. So or, or 514 production events outside of Sona or both. So 
what are the first kind of big names that you start booking once Sona starts to explode? Oh, well, the f- well or just the, memorable ones. Well, you know, Carl Cox. Uh, oh my God, Jeff Mills. Uh, you know, David Morales. Uh, I mean, everyone. I remember everyone. Mistress Barbara you was there a bunch it, of you times. Name it. Well, Mistress Barbara's from Montreal, so right. She was so, like one of the house ones. No, every yeah, time I'm there, but, she was but like. But to me, to me, uh, Mistress Barbara, like, uh, like she became bigger, bi- big. Because a bit later it. not in you know not, it yeah. took a few years for her to become mistress barbara because at first i was like hey barb what's up you know it was like, <laughs> like, not, like 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 she's amazing she, she, has she was talent. filling then between slots right? you know but she has talent like she's amazing but uh it wasn't like today you say miss you book mistress barbara everybody freaks out but back in the day it's like yeah barbara you know eddie let's and, ju- and you know let's, sorry to interrupt you yeah. let's just let's just get to what the people want to hear Oh yeah, the dirt. I want to yeah, I want to know. <laughs> Let's cut the pleasantries now. I want to know some of the crazy cuz you are crazy Eddie. Some of the craziest Ooh. stories. Okay. From Sona okay. that stick out okay. to you. First off. And don't hold anything first back. First off, you know how we're talking about Studio 54? Yeah. And there's so many stories there. Mm-hmm. We are like truly when I look at it, we are the Studio 54 of Montreal I would of say the so. 90s. Mm-hmm. Um uh, there's one story that <laughs> that <laughs> I just love. St- I, I tell people this story all the time. Is uh, you remember how like the, the like the main room, mm-hmm. the bar in the main room, and then there's like there's a busboy area, mm-hmm. and there's like a, a stairs that go upstairs, and there's a mezzanine, but it's closed oh. off to people. I it's lived like, in the mezzanine. Well, you know what I'm saying. Of so course. so lo- so so this is the story. <laughs> this is the story. <laughs> the mezzanine. Have you ever boy? have you ever seen a naked girl fall from the sky? From the mezzanine, probably. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes or no? Have you ever seen a naked woman fall from the ceiling, from the f- whatever? No. Okay, well, this is what <laughs> happened. I'm sitting at the bar, and I'm talking to the barman, and all of a sudden, I see a naked girl. Boom, fall. Like, butt naked. Like <laughs> In ne- the middle of a like, club like, with, like, 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 like 2,000 like, people like partying. butt naked. She fell from, like, a, a like, swing I'll, or something? I'll tell you. Well, no, no, not even. No. Better, better than that. So she gets up. She goes, oh, Eddie, what's up? <laughs> I'm like, what's up? Later. She goes back upstairs. So I look up and because you can't see. Like my, my, like, so I look up. It was up. like a secret trap yeah. door room behind yeah. Yeah. the DJ booth on top okay. where only people who worked yeah. at the club knew about it. Because that's where we were. It was, it was a stock room kind of, you know. So I look up and I see, and I won't mention any names. I see three of my friends with two girls and the third one's coming up and they're, you know, they're doing a doggy style. And uh, you went too hard, and the girl fell over, <laughs> and you went know, back and fell over and landed. And I was like, "Hey, what's she up?" She fell out of a room yeah, on top she, of yeah. the DJ booth. Yeah, she fell out to yeah. where they were standing yeah. in the club yeah. with two thousand people yeah. in yeah. the middle of like a rave style yeah. party yeah. at five. And six then she the got morning. up and said, "What's up, crazy?" I'm like, "What's and up?" And down. went back up because you know she wasn't done. So this was the and climate. so that's one that's that's and this is yeah. every fucking weekend. Something yeah. like this would happen, but no, that one just like no wonder like why so circle. many of so yeah. so many of them didn't make. So it. imagine like you're a kid, you're 15 years old, you're sitting at a bar, and you got a naked woman falling from the ceiling. You go, okay, that uh, that's it. I Where do I sign? I up? could definitely imagine. I could definitely imagine it because I was that kid, but I did not see that bro, specific incident. Bro, even like <laughs> I, like nothing surprises me. But when that happened, I was like, what? Okay, like, we reached a new level now. Like it's like okay, this is and the level was you know, getting tough every, every fucking week, every other week. I've seen. I mean, I've seen some. I've seen celebrities, and I, I don't, talk about. And I, no. You don't have to. You don't have to blow them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not just gonna, who? I'm what not, what well, kind of names are we talking well, about? Crazy par- stories. I with. partied with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Mm. Uh, I partied with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. And to me, you know what I mean? Like I, like I don't drop names. To me, they, they shit the same color. Right, the regular fucking people. I don't people. give a fuck. And they were happy you know? to be yeah, there man. when they and, were in and, town. And, and when I say we partied, like we partied. <laughs> you know what I mean? We partied. <laughs> And uh, I can't, I can't tell you. You know what I mean? No, no, no. We don't have to. We, we, get, it, we get it. We get it. We, we can leave party, it to the viewer's know? imagination. Yeah. But and, um, and you know, I've interesting. Seen some, I've seen some interesting shit, and and I could tell you also some some. We had a lot of celebrities come come through Sona, and some celebrities, like I told I told them to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I didn't give a shit. Of course. Uh, and I could tell you too. Uh, Please. Toby McGuire. Okay. Is a jerk and a half. Okay. He's <laughs> Leonardo's best friend, so he called me. He goes, "Yo, I got Toby. Can you take care of him?" I'm like, yeah, cool. But gave me attitude right off the bat. I said, I might send you back <laughs> in a body bag. You know, <laughs> just saying, you know. Yeah. And one that, that I, I made fun of actually was, uh, what's his name? Uh, 
Carlton from uh, Fresh Prince. Uh, what's his real name? Uh, uh, Ricardo Alphonse, Alfonso Rivera. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So this is a funny story. Uh, we're at Buenanote. He's there. So I'm like, yo, Carlton, do that dance. <laughs> he's like, oh, fuck. So I go to another place. I go to four different places that night. And he's there. And every, night, every time, I'm like, yo, do that dance, do that dance. And he's like, not having it. So we end up, the last time I see him, at Sona. And now he, he has enough of me. He's like, he goes to see a doorman. Oh, that guy. I'm like, eh, wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. <laughs> my city, my place. But I, like, and plus, and plus, I, I got to tell you, I was a fucking asshole back then. <laughs> I was a fucking, I, I, I'll be your best friend and I'll be your best motherfucking asshole too. <laughs> you know, I was, oh. It, so, it, it could switch like, oh, like quickly. Like, you know, it depends how you, how you treat me. But yeah, I, I wasn't nice. <laughs> 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 but it was the funniest thing him turning around and said wait were you oh, Dorman really? I'm like really <laughs> really <laughs> oh yeah really. you know, I like the way know. he approached you on like, that there's one. so many so many so many stories of that but and, you and know, most of them honestly a lot of sex and a lot of drugs a lot like, for real like, so I've like, heard yeah Sona yeah, was you're a in lot the, you're in the business pretty much that was bro, uh, another funny story this is this one is, is heavy uh, the owner had a, had a, a Rothweller in mm. the office mm. and he had a secret passageway where he would take and and leave from the back and i knew that place so that was one of my favorite places to to bring a girl to explore mm -hmm. <laughs> explore the magic you know what i'm saying well put <clears throat> so the door opens and i grab the girl and i'm like Koo! on the wall and the owner and the rottweiler walk right in front of us and go like they didn't see us i was like what the fuck and so that was like a scary because the dog didn't like me to begin with and you and were probably uh, doing something that resembled doing, doggy no, no, style no, no, and maybe no, no, the no. dog wants to well, jump in. Well, some, some, <laughs> so, so, something like that. And uh, so that That's was... That's another story. That was That's another, another story. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff like that uh, or a lot of girls, you know, showing their boobs to get into the VIP room. <laughs> but that's like regular stuff, that's you regular. know. And the VIP <laughs> bathroom was always busy. Oh, yeah. And you know, uh, and for those <clears> who, who, <throat> who never went, um, there was... The bathrooms were unisex. Right, I forgot so about that. So you could just yeah, imagine yeah. there was a party happening in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it was like people thought behind, like the, like, like the, the VIP was cool. And the, then there was like the special VIP behind the DJ booth and in the DJ booth. Oh, yeah. But the we party, lived in the DJ yeah, booth. Yeah, but the party was, was in the bathroom. The yeah. party was in the bathroom. Well, you know, the, but you wanted to get to the bathroom. Yeah, that yeah. was the goal. Yeah, right? if, if, if you could get in, because I was like, most of the times, where's Eddie? He's in the bathroom. <laughs> I have no shame saying, because everyone knows, man. Everyone knows back then is like, yeah, it was a very uh, different, it was a party. It was a, it was a very different. and I'm gonna tell you something. Like I had a girlfriend and I cheated on her because I was a fucking prick, mm -hmm. and I got her a job in another club at 7:37 just because she was out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I was that kind of fucking prick. <laughs> so at three, three, four, five o'clock, depending on what time she finishes, or the doormans would be on the walkie. Okay, uh, crazy your girlfriend's here. Okay. So now it's girlfriend boyfriend time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, like I was bad. I was bad. But you know what? The thing is, I was a kid, man. I was a kid when I was younger. I was butt ugly. I had no money. Girls didn't give a shit about me. And then when I got this, this, Thatcher, you know, you got that position. Like, now it's time. It's time throwing, to show off. Girls would like. It's like Eddie Murphy. Girls are throwing pussy at him. You know, yeah. like you used the, and abused, bro. Like too much. But you know. But you know what? Thank God, you know, you still look healthy. You yep, still look yep, very yep. good for your age. Thank you. And Thank we're you. all still here to have this yeah, conversation. Yeah, so yeah. I would say that, you know, we definitely <laughs> came out a lot luckier than a I, lot I, of other people. I wanted to say that before, Bless, yeah. that uh, you mentioned that, like the drugs and yeah. and uh, when you were young, but you yeah. you kind of found yourself at the same time. Um, the thing is this: like when we start, when when I started doing drugs, I was doing ecstasy. And the ecstasy back then was really clean and really pure. So it wasn't all this bullshit that you have today. Right. There was no PCP and like so it was it was like a, a really clean vibe, a clean mm, right. a clean drug to do. Uh, not that drugs are good or bad, you know, but that that first That it, it first round clean, of yeah. ecstasy was different than everything yeah, after. After that I got messed up in it. But but I got into like some heavy I got into cocaine. Right. And that fucked me up. Like Bad that fucked drug. me up big time. Like you know, and um, I'm like I don't use. I haven't used in uh, eight years, over eight years. Respect. Congratulations. You know, I drink once in a while, a little bit, uh, and I know I am lucky. Like I have friends that. But it, it's wild. You're the reverse because you said before that like you didn't have a purpose. You didn't have somewhere to go, and drugs saved you to find your purpose. Yeah. It's like most most people they turn to it and it's like. <clears throat> It yeah, all goes yeah. downhill. But if you don't tame that beast, yeah. then the beast eats you. Yeah. Right, right. But it's just it's yeah. a very different story than most people yeah. where 
drugs kind of like put you in a better place. Yeah, yeah. Well, temporarily <laughs> until it takes everything. Yeah. But okay, that, that, that's the thing, yeah, because uh, I mean, I know people that are still using drugs today and it hasn't affected their personal life because wild, they, wild. Because they know how to, you know what I mean? They know how to control it or whatever. I lost it. I like I haven't. I learned that I have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. So like back there, you know, where the, 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 there was a kid back there playing Nintendo. Yeah. And you do you play? I'm like no, <laughs> no. You're gonna like, get because too into it. you know I you know it's like Facebook. Fa Facebook is an addiction. You know, like 100%. all these things Social are drugs. Media. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so the so I was lucky. I was lucky. I wanted to say like like I've I'm, I've almost died a few times. Uh, you know, I have friends that died from overdoses, suicides, or murder. Yeah. So I'm lucky. I'm lucky every day. I'm lucky. Yeah, we all um, had. We all yeah. had. Unfortunately, yeah, the same stories and similar experiences. And we all have friends. We all have, and because this is the business, you know, uh, entertainment business. Yeah. There's sex, drugs everywhere. Yeah, you know, and you, you have know, to be strong. You know what I mean? You have to me be super personally, strong. you know, I lost my own sister. Mm, I lost yeah. my own sister Sorry to hear about that. ten years ago. Sorry to um, hear that. Yeah, thank you. Um, and you know, it always, it always hits close to home yeah, and yeah. we always think that, yeah. you know, we, we were smarter than that no, or no. I'm blessed or I'm Eddie and you know, Hey, I'm crazy Eddie. I could handle this. Exactly, no, no, you no, know, or, uh, no. And, and even though, you know, we've seen it all, I'm sure between the two yeah, of yeah, us, yeah, I yeah. Mean, you know, a lot of people say we've seen it all, but between my experiences and his, I'm sure we've <laughs> seen it all. And I think that, um, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong. It just comes a time where you become sick. Of yeah. the same old bullshit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you need something else to challenge mm. you because we've yeah. been there and done that when it comes to the nightlife yeah. and when it comes to the party scene. Talk to me a little bit about um, Sona explodes. You're in this wild ride. You're making yeah. money. How does um, it start to dissolve after a while? Where there outside forces that tried to come in and 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 um, enter the business? How 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 did how did it roll? Well, you know, like 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 back then, there was like the biker war. So, <clears throat> sorry. So uh, obviously, uh, they were in there, you know, like doing their thing, you know. And um, but most, most, the most, the the, the thing is, what 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 actually broke us up is uh, is ego and greed. Mm. Whatever outside influence with the bikers and whatever, it's mostly greed and egos. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know. Um, unfortunate right yeah yeah because it's, 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 it's like it your favorite great. band you know your favorite band right. breaks up it's always over egos always mm -hmm. always that's, always. that's exactly yeah. how my i mean i don't know if you know my background but i started with epic <laughs> mealtime which is a very popular okay. youtube channel and we were seven eight guys that were all <clears throat> best friends all grew up yeah. together and yeah. a little bit of money starts coming into yeah. play and things get very sticky it's very the quickly. ego it's like the money is one thing but the ego because i could be broke as fuck yeah and have the biggest ego and fuck shit up right yeah you know what i mean and i could be rich as fuck and have the really like yeah. said, so the money is is a big part of feeding that ego 100 percent. well that's it once the money comes then yeah. the egos start coming yeah. in the egos it was it was, it was all control. of it it was like the money the fame, the drugs, the power. Because we had, because I could walk into Buenanote wearing a fucking G-string, and they would let me in, and mm -hmm. nobody could walk. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, what, what are you doing? And I'm, and I was a punk. You know what I mean? And I, I knew that I could do it. You know? Mm -hmm. And so all that, like, and plus people are telling you, oh man, you're crazy. Oh, you're the best. Oh, you're. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and like today, like I, like I'm humbled by all this. Yeah. And sometimes I, like, I don't. Sometimes I don't like talking about that that side of me where i was like yeah right. but but that's who i was before and a lot of people will tell you i, I, I they either they loved me or they fucking hated me you yeah. know and because i was a fucking asshole yeah i was you know i think we had a similar story in that like people either hated me or loved me and yeah. i think but what they, they but they don't know you exactly they, they, you know what i mean they, they, they knew this character yeah. this name yeah. eddie or this yeah. name bless and they saw us around yeah. and they figured i bet that guy's an asshole or i bet that guy thinks he's the shit or you know what what's even worse? or he had to smack my yeah. friend because yeah, yeah. my friend was out of line and now oh, i gotta tell you two funny stories now uh like they they love you and uh, and until you make money, you start making money. Everybody hates you. Mm -hmm. Like I remember one day, I'm, I'm I just bought a, a brand new. Um, well, I didn't buy it, but I was leasing a, a Ford Explorer. Yeah. I mean, I worked fucking hard for this money. I got an Explorer, <laughs> and I because I got flyers and I got posters. So I pull up in front of I don't I don't remember which club, and I pull out. A, I got my Ford Explorer. I'm happy. I got a you know I got a car, man. It's dope, you know. 
And some guy goes, oh, yeah, on sait bien c'est qui. Uh, like, they're jealous that I, man, I, I'm working for this fucking guy. Mm -hmm. And these are guys that I was hanging out with, going out, giving them free tickets to places. And they love me back then. Yeah. But now that, I, that I'm successful and I have money, yeah. you don't like me no more? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. That's, that's and that's, completely a, and that's a Quebec thing. Like, you go to Toronto, they love you because you got a fucking BMW. Like, yo, you made it. Here, you drive a BMW? Oh, fucking asshole. You got money? Like what? I think I think that's that's also entertainment industry. No, that's a Quebec thing. Yeah, okay. that's a Quebec thing. Like no matter if you're in the in the in the, in the art in, uh, business or whatever, like Quebecers, like they they have this thing against you being successful. Hmm. It's I'm telling you. It's, well, you guys are the English community, yeah. but the French community they hate you if you're successful. Yeah, that's fucked up, man. Interesting. That's fucked up. Yeah. You, 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 it's a big it's thing. It's crabs in, in a bucket yeah. mentality. Bro. Everybody everybody you know? tries to. Yeah pulled each other back so uh so yeah you know i i lost friends over the years but when you lose friends over like okay you don't want to be my friend anymore because i have money now yeah you know like yeah it, it, you definitely didn't and expect that, and that's that a reaction. french canadian thing that's a french canadian thing i'm telling you like in the english community like they love like you're successful like you're su if you're successful i'm happy for you i'm proud of you mm -hmm. like i want to help you to uh, 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 how, how can i get in but yeah. french canadians like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. well that's always been something in the hip-hop scene um you know <clears throat> that i've that i've always like that i've said many times even on the podcast that we have such a vibrant city and mm. such a dope scene yeah. and so many talented people yeah. came out especially in the arts uh, of our city but we always had a lack of infrastructure and a lack of support yeah. for one another yeah and i don't know where that mentality came from but it's something that really held us back because mm. right now we look at the obvious successes that toronto has been having for sure. in uh in all aspects yeah. and they have that pride yeah. for the city yeah. like yo you're from to wicked oh yeah. this this artist is from to or you know whatever and we have that montreal pride we but have there's, the pride but there's but something yeah the there's ego yeah. the yeah, ego yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than yeah. you know seeing somebody like yo if i see eddie doing something and i can add to his business exactly. or his concept exactly. why the fuck not exactly. a lot of people wanted to compete with each yeah. other and say and competition is good but uh, uh, you know, in a, it can't be like hateful. Well, you know well, well I mean? when it becomes, I would rather make no money than have him make money. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You understand? Yeah. Like, if he's gonna yeah. make more than me, I just don't want yeah. either of us to do it. I'll go to McDonald's. That's okay, silly. cool. And then they're pissed off at you because you made it. That's well, you could have been part of this. You could have been. You could have been right. part of this. Why not? You know? Because I'm all about like, like, <clears throat> and it's still today. I, like, people call me if you need something, and I and I could provide. I'll give it to you. Yeah. You know. Here you go. Some people would rather a hundred percent of a million than ten percent of a hundred million. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Because they don't want anyone else to have anything. And then guess what? They end up with exactly. nothing. Right? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> they and, end and, up with and, nothing. And, and you know, like I've been, I've made mistakes. I still make mistakes today. But that that one thing though that I, that I that I that I know is. If you need help and I can help you, I will help you. If I can't help you, I'll tell you. But and this is another another thing of Montreal is they'll tell you, "Hey, I got you, I got you." Then you call, "Hey, time time for you to." Nope. Nope. Yeah. You know, well, and, it's, and you don't have to because you said you would. But when it's the norm, I think that sucks. You know, because I'll help you out if I can't help you. If you're asking me to, to rap, I'm like, "Yo, bro, your career's going down if you want me to rap." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't rap. You know what I mean? But if I can do something for you, yeah, I'll do it. I appreciate it because it. because not only am I helping you a friend, but it's also good for me. I, I, you know I, what I mean? I, and I remember recently speaking to that, like we had reconnected after a few years of not seeing each other, and right away he was like, "You know what? Bless." He was doing some work for Circus. Yeah. He booked us and was like, "Yo, send me your package. Send me what yeah. you have. If I could put you on any." Yeah, festivals. I wanted to do. I wanted to do and stuff. And I always know? appreciated that. And I'm always. It doesn't always work out. You know what I mean? If I, if it doesn't I had, have yeah. to though. But yeah. I think people remember when yeah. good cats are yeah. like passionate and they're like, "Yo, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna drop your name yeah. in whoever is and here that's the thing. and whatever." You put happens. it out there. It works. It works. I I send lines. You know, you go fishing. You send a hundred lines, and one's gonna one's gonna catch. You know, that's Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know? So real quick, after Sona, what did you do after Sona? When did you decide to that become must have been a hard pill to swallow? To become yeah. so yeah. sober, a hard pill. No pun intended. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sober and clean. Well, it, well, it, it took a long time. It didn't just happen like that. I, I remember just. I remember. I'll tell you. I'll be like straight up. I remember going to the bathroom, doing lines, going, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Mm. Like having the bag going again. You know, like that. That whole. It, it was just like a, you know when you're sm smoking a cigarette, 
You're smoking, you don't even notice you're smoking. Right. I was doing lines, not even noticing I was doing lines. Yeah. You know, straight up. You're waking up in the morning before a shower kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, ah, and you're, just, you're in a bad then, place, uh, bro. Yeah, I noticed it was a problem, yeah. you know. But uh, wanting to quit doesn't, you know, doesn't happen. So it took years and years. And, I, and I, you know what I did at one point? I quit for like six months. Yeah. For those six months, you know what I did? Is I worked. I went to. Uh, I worked in landscaping. Mm. I'm going Keep to yourself work, busy. Man. Yeah, back to working, basics, man. Bro, I was working six days a week, twelve hours a day, and at night I would go to the gym and go home and sleep. Yeah, That's what yeah, I did for six no, months. You, you isolate yourself, yeah, and but but the problem with that is I'm not helping myself. I'm just like I'm just stopping. You yeah, know. Right. So my head goes, okay, man, yeah, you fucking work, gym, nothing sleep, to look forward work, to. nothing. So I I go out one night. I go out one night. Uh oh. No, everything's cool. Okay. Everything's cool. Okay. And two weeks later, mm, man, let me go out again. <laughs> I have one drink, you know. And then, so it Starts comes back, you know. Slope. So what really, what really uh, got me, like, uh, one day, man, I was like, I was, I was, broke the fuck out. I was fucking high as fuck. Uh, I was like, man, I got nothing left, you know. And I remember, look, I was looking out the window, and there was like a, a, a like a, and I'll, I'll, I'm honest with you, I don't give a shit, like, like I'm tug, but I'm also, you know, I've, I've, I've been through some shit, and there was like a bush or something. I thought it was, I thought I was hallucinating. I thought it was the, 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 the Virgin bush. Mary, the Mer Virgin Mary. Fuck. And I said, you know, and, and I prayed. I said, get me the fuck out of here, blah blah blah, whatever. So I, I called a friend up uh, two days later. I said, bro, you stopped, you, because you, I knew he stopped using. Mm -hmm. He brought me to a, 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 a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. Good for you, man. You know? And, Saved uh, your life, yeah, respect, bro. brother. Saved yeah. your life, man. And, uh, and that's a whole other story. That's a whole other, uh, other environment. But uh, I needed that, because, like I said, I could stop. What I learned is I could stop by myself any day, any time. But I, I'll replace it with work, gym, mm -hmm. work, and then mm -hmm. no life, you know, in between. Yeah. So right. that that the meeting to find the balance. Yeah, the meetings taught me like I did therapies. I like I went I I did some fucking and, heavy. and if I can if I can just add to it, I mean I've had my share as well. But I mean, hash, weed, whatever yeah, you know, yeah. like not a problem. Alcohol, even not a problem. But when I was sober, sober, and I wasn't doing anything, the only thing that I still thought about that was in the back of my head was yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know why that drug just never gets yeah. out of your system. Yeah. It doesn't get out of your yeah. brain. I don't want to yeah. smoke. I don't want to drink. Yeah. I don't do anything. Yeah. But for some reason, I still think about that. Yeah. Why? Yeah, it's crazy. And, 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 and the thing is, uh, uh, I had to learn. I had to relearn everything because, you know, like, I had no limits. You know what I mean? I know like, the feeling. You know what I mean? I, have, I had no limits. So, I know the feeling. You know, right. but I did like a, what they call introspection, like big time, like uh, for months and months and months. Because I'm the kind of guy, if I, like, I have an object, I have a, I'm mission driven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my mission is to get from here to there. What do I need to, to do? So sure. I do it. So I went and did everything, uh, and it worked. Well, and, I, and, I, and, I, and it worked. And I've seen other people it didn't work, but I, I, like, I just fucking. And in the in, in, and while I was uh, while I was sober, and I got married. Congratulations! Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm divorced. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, but, and he's still sober damn though. It. But I'm still like I've been through some shit, bro. Like I, like I've been like I have friends who, who killed themselves. Where I was like, man. And sometimes I had those 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 those, those thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, but getting clean and seeing like life for what it is, like it's 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 life, uh, uh, it's it's, it's uh, 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 on its on, on its own terms. Yeah. You know, when you see that, the different perspective. It's like you know, like, but uh, it's 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 still like today. Like I could go out, but I'll have a drink or two. But that's it. Yeah. Well, I salute <clears> you because you know everybody doesn't realize that all these stories were fun at the time. And, you know, it was a wild ride, right. but it only, it only matters if you survive. Yeah, for sure. For you sure. Understand? If for you sure. survive. So, um, a but lot it's a lot of scars in like mental scars and, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but those are the, like, like I got scars like all day, you know what I mean? And these heal really fast, kind of but the, the other scars, like, yeah. they come back, they come I know back. The feeling, brother. But, uh, I know yeah. the feeling. And you know, perhaps we had those scars to begin with, which is, absolutely. which is why yeah, absolutely. we found ourselves in that scene, Absolutely. but we were too young and immature to realize what we were doing exactly. or what exactly. patterns we were repeating and, and yeah. cycles we were yeah. perpetuating. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But that's it's interesting that we talk about that, brother, because I recently, just before the holidays, you know, went through a point in my life where I was like, you know what, I can't continue to drink, mm. you know, two, three, four days a week, mm. even though, you know, when I would have a couple drinks, I wouldn't be under the floor. I was mm. never an alcoholic, but hanging out with guys like you and then with guys like Guru and 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 being part of this, you know, ride that I've been on for 
since I was 15 years yeah, old, yeah. it catches up to you. Yeah. And like what you were saying, it becomes what's second nature to you. If you were to look at it objectively from, from a normal standpoint, yeah. it's become uh, abusive. Yeah. And, and it, just to your physical well being. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like I, to, I used to party. It's like party like a, a party. Like a, it's like a rock star, yeah. but uh, yeah. recover like uh, <laughs> you can't recover like a rock star anymore. You know what I mean? Exactly. And just that in itself, it's hard. And uh, honestly, if I take that third or fourth drink, I'm wasted. Yeah. I'm wasted. I'm like, Ugh. which is a good thing. Which is a good thing now. No, because then I want some, I want some yayo. I got you. You know what I mean? Because my brain goes yayo. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the addiction. The addi yeah. I was, I will always be an addict. Yeah. Always. But I you know think I mean? the success is in <clears throat> knowing yourself. You're obviously being very honest with yourself and being able to find that middle ground for you. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Where you can still and, go and, out, and, have a couple drinks, yeah, and, I walk, and go and home I, and not yeah, have to go. Yeah. And I walk away also sometimes. Like like if I'm somewhere and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling comfortable or whatever. I'm like, good for you. Gotta go. Yeah. And the opposite before was like, oh yeah, I'm not feeling too good. Give me some booze. Give me some. And you're coke. the last guy. You're crawling you know, out of like, the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like I, I listen to these, um, the instinct. You know, the intuition. Good for you. That's what it is. But because every time I don't listen to it, I get in trouble. Every time I get my ego, I let my ego get involved, I get in trouble. You know what I mean? So, because I, I still imagine. do it, I still, I still fuck up on a regular basis, man. Ask my we girlfriend. We all do. Ask my girlfriend. Just in the last three weeks, she gave me like so much shit. I'm like, okay. But it you just know makes any, me realize at least I'm, you're I'm trying still a to better yourself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that uh, yeah, starts yeah. there, you know. And yeah. for me, you know, it's it, it's been interesting because I've really over the last uh, you know few episodes been wanting to talk about what does health and wellness look like mm. in this culture? Yeah, because because it's not this. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not this. Because it, some people think that. I'll tell you when I first went home with a Rolex oh. and a BMW, I thought I was successful. That's right. And I come from a family, a side of my family who has a lot of money. They looked at me like, you're a punk. Yeah. Because that Rolex, that BMW doesn't make you successful. And you're just a punk with a Rolex and a beer. And when you <laughs> grew, and when you grew to a stage of maturity or a level of maturity, you realize that if you're unhappy, when you look in the mirror, that Rolex, yeah, that Beamer, that yeah. girl ain't going to make you happy. Exactly. And it yep. ain't going to make you shit. And there's a lot of rich, and this is a gem, people. There's a lot of rich, miserable motherfuckers yeah, for out real, there. For because real. everybody, you know, regular guys like us who don't come from money, yeah. we grow we, up. We, we know how to survive, you know We know mean? how to survive, but we grow up believing, well, if I didn't have financial problems and if I didn't have to worry about making money, my life would be great. Yeah, not, no, necessarily. not necessarily. Not necessarily. You know my mom used to tell me all the time and I, it stuck with me is if money is your biggest problem, you don't have any. You don't have no problem. <laughs> and yeah. it sticks with me all yeah. the time, you know? Yeah. That's wise, bro. And I went through I, that. I'll tell you something. I, at one point, I was broke like a motherfucker mm -hmm. and I was happy, yeah. right? You know, and I've had money and I was like uh, chasing something, you know, like, uh, uh, you know you what, know? you know, personally, I had a, I had a fork in the road where, and I think I mentioned this to you, Lemmy, um, I was doing a lot of introspection too. And just being honest with myself, like, and that's the key is the honesty. I've been know? through so much brother. Mm. So have you, so have you, right um, up. I've seen so much and I used to believe really in my core that success would equal happiness. Yes. Okay? Everybody if thinks If Bless that. was fucking yeah. doing Eminem numbers yeah. or Drake numbers, success would equal mm. happiness. And it does You know what I realized? And it's so fucking simple. Mm. It's the other way. Mm. Yep. Happiness Makes you successful. equals success. Yeah. You won yeah. already. Yeah. And I don't exactly. mean any measure of success. I mean, yeah. if I'm personally happy and if it, I'm in it, a fantastic yeah. place, yeah. I've already won. It's I'm not, already successful. You know successful. what it is? It's not like, it's not like <clears throat> your environment. You know, like, like, yeah, I have a cool couch at home. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I got a big screen TV. Yeah. You know, that's cool. But it's inside that's happening. That's right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's, 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 it's like we're chasing that, 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 that dream. Like I still got dreams, man. But, but we're chasing something that is elusive because perhaps if we get it, it we won't be uh, as satisfied about it. It's, you know what it is? It's the chase that's cool. Like, I love the hustle. That's right. You know what I mean? Sometimes I think I sabotage myself just on purpose just so I could hustle again. <laughs> and if the hustle you know? makes you weird, feel, man. if the hustle makes you feel productive and makes you feel fulfilled, great. Yeah. But it starts with happiness. Yeah. Has got to be the foundation yeah, to for your sure. success. For sure. But I, for a long time, I thought, you know, idolizing these guys yeah. in hip hop and yeah. in the street, I thought that. Because that's the image. You know? It mean, was the, the opposite. That's the first thing you see. That's like, I'll right. tell you honestly, when I got married, uh, 
wife. We're like, if I don't know how to love myself, mm-hmm. I can't love you. That's, that's, I can't love you back. That's a gem, right? You know what I mean? That's the if truth. I don't know how to love myself, that's the there's truth. no way that I can, I can love you. No and you're way. always going to do things that are detrimental to yourself. That's going to push good people away because exactly. they're going to feel like, exactly. wow, it's Eddie doesn't give it's a, a fuck about me. It's a sabotage. Eddie doesn't give a fuck mm-hmm. about me. But how can Eddie show he gives a fuck about you if he's not well exactly that's right? the thing it's like uh, what, what what's respect if you got beat up all your life yeah you're like what's respect what is it you know like and it's we all also these like you have to respect yourself in order to respect someone else oh yeah, absolutely you know? and you don't have to respect everybody you know what i mean like there's people i don't respect yeah but uh, like i respect myself so by respecting myself i might be like okay i can't i can't hang with you yeah because what you bring in my life is no good. So by yeah. respect, you know what my, my new move is yeah. that I've, I've been doing recently. I don't like being the smartest person in the room. If I'm the one that's leading, if I'm the one that's like like the one that's gonna make the plan and do this and do that, at, yeah. at this point in my life, I don't yeah. want it. I, I don't lo- want to lo- be that guy. I love to be surrounded by people that are smarter than me. Right? Isn't that and a beautiful yeah. thing? When I was in Toronto, my uncle told me, he goes, Eddie, you, uh, is, you don't have to go to school. You just have to surround yourself with people right. that your like, network, that, you know, right? And I was like, when he told me that. Like surround yourself with, 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 with people that are smarter than you. I looked, okay, who am I hanging out with? And I said, all my friends are stupid as fuck. Right. Like at that time, dude, I was like, dude. so I got to change my environment, you know? You're na- you nailed it. Like we're you know here I mean? we're here today and shout out to Mocor who sponsors this whole thing. And these guys, I mean, they keep both of us motivated. Like That's there's great. podcasts that are going on. I mean- it's it's a special place when you're with creative people, right? Exactly. You keep yourself exactly. with creative people. They you don't pull, they, they don't push they don't pull you down. They they they, they lift you up. And you it's know? about collaborating with like minded individuals yeah. who are passionate. And at the end of the day, we do this shit because we enjoy. It. Like I don't have to be here tonight. You know what I mean? I could be home like watching uh, what's on tonight, like uh, <laughs> the Walking Dead or something, <laughs> right. whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? Like like you 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 asked me. I was like, yeah, man. I'm like I'm not here because hey, I gotta. I gotta, I gotta talk about Promote myself. Promote yourself. You know what I mean? I got, I got, Eddie, I got really no happy. events. I got no, you know. I'm really happy you're here because I thought we were gonna talk about drugs and alcohol, and it actually became the exact opposite. It was what we did, fine, and we could laugh about mm. it, fine. Yeah. But really, I mean, there's a message behind this podcast, and it's you're not winning if you're on under the influence and fucked no, up all the time. No, no. Nobody wins, really. No, but nobody. I, like, I agree like, with you, you. You could be like, you could be like the most successful person. Like well rounded, well surrounded. I mean, you got everything. Yeah, everything. But you're doing drugs. I'm not saying like a guy. Like everybody's allowed to do what they want. Someone that's doing drugs once in a while, drinking once in a while, and he's got his shit together. But yeah. if you're doing drugs and alcohol on a regular basis, not work you're out. an addict. Not only you're, that, you know what I mean. No matter how, and I love what you just said. That I'm put that in a verse. Well rounded and well surrounded. Yeah. You think you are. If you're abusing yourself. At any given moment, something can go wrong and yeah. you can lose it all just e- like that. Everything, everything. You can and lose your life, bro. That's right. Just that. Like, forget money. You lose your, your life. You lose your You lose life. your legs. You lose, you know, whatever it is. You know, I know people that are paralyzed. I know, I know a guy, a friend, old friend of mine, smartest motherfucker ever. Okay. And now he's like a vegetable. Like, not like he's like, like he did too much. Wow. And he's stuck there. Like, what's it called? A psychosis. Mm. He's stuck there. What a shame. Okay, he's stuck there. I could have been I could have been like that. Many right? times. You no, know, I've sure. had five concussions and the last concussion I had, I I stuttered for a fucking year. A oh. whole year. That's so not a joke. I, no, it's not a, I could have like I could walk out of here now, slip on the ice, bang my head, and be stuck there. I can. Yeah. Because my brain is is is, is been more fri- you know. Yeah. Well, thank so. God that, you know, you were able to kind of um be honest with yourself. I got to. You I know, got to. And, and, and and I still and I still talk shit. When it's time to talk shit, yeah. but I, you know, I got to be honest. Well, it's so know? important, brother. Yeah. And you know what, man? It seems like you're in a great place. Fine. <laughs> it seems like you're in a great place. And yeah. you know, you're always somebody that, you know, I'm happy to work with. If there's ever any projects we can collaborate on, I'm Just more than it. happy. Let's do it. For sure. So where are you at now? What are you working um, on now? What are your hopes? What are your future goals? Man, right now, everything's on hold. I'm telling, I'll tell you honestly, the last two years, I've been really hard, like trying to do all kinds of stuff. I've done a few events where I've lost money. Uh, and it's hard, man. It's a hard business, you know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, but I love, I love, I love this business of like entertainment of like, but not just like, like, like clubs and stuff, just like organizing, like creating, you know, I love that, the hustle. Taking the, something that doesn't exist and making it into making something where something. you, you know will have a great time. Yeah, at. But it might the, be time to start a new chapter then in a new project. Well, this is the thing. I have, I have projects, I have uh, concepts, I have ideas and, and, uh, Plus, I'm super well organized. I, I, got, I got this, you know? Mm-hmm. But 
it's like it's like anything else you need two things actually three things the balls which i have the second thing is the right people around you with balls and money and that's the third the, the most important unfortunately most important ingredient is the money yeah you know and that's what it is you know because it's like you could have the best product out there and you don't market it you don't promote it Those nobody know knows it. about it you know so it's the same thing you know Those and it's know all it. about it's all about money unfortunately like i hate to say it but it's a big it's, big part of it you know if because if i had the financial uh, financial uh what's it called um, means means you'd be seeing me everywhere you know what i mean well you know and, what? and it's not even about making money you know it's about you're just passionate about doing uh, something about and eventually you will, you will make money that's right. you know what i mean because when i started man i started my the fi- uh, crazy productions first swirl i put a thousand dollars in it a thousand dollars wow and my work was worth you know yeah put a thousand dollars in it that was the, the origins you know that was the origin. that thousand crazy bucks. You crazy. Know, that's crazy start something today with that thousand dollars you'll buy some you know maybe a t-shirt <laughs> you're gonna, no you're going to costco you're getting some chocolate bars you're standing outside <laughs> yeah, you, 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 yeah you know what i'm but that's that's what and and the beauty of it was when i first met the brothers like when i first met them today it's another story but when i first met them they believed in me mm-hmm. and they had the money mm-hmm. but i said you know what guys i want to put money too so i go how much you have i have a thousand dollars and the budget was, I'll tell you honestly, the, the, our first budget was like the whole total budget was $30,000. So my $1,000 didn't play. It was just symbolic. You know what I mean? It's some, like I want to, I'm working for it, but, but they believed in me. And that's what you need. You need guys, like those guys back in the day. And, and, and I'm sure you guys know a bunch of people like this that will see you and will believe in you and will put the money in. Because when I had money, I've, I've, I've helped a lot of people because I believed in them. That's a gem. And that's, that's, you know, like, that's what you need, man. You need someone to believe in you. And then you just take it, you know? Very right. Yeah. Well, you know, you've definitely done it with the best of them through a lot of legendary events. And uh, we're a very integral part of a very yeah, magical sure. time thank and you. scene some in our of, city. Some of <laughs> Salute you for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Seems like you're in a great place. I, hate, I can't, I, like, when, when people give me compliments, I like, I it's the <laughs> truth though, bro. It's the yeah. truth, man. Well, you got to give people their roses. Thank you. While, while thank they, you. What, yeah. What's the expression? Give, give roses while they can still smell them. Yeah. So you salute go. to you yeah. on all your accomplishments, thank everything thank you've you. done. Thank, thank you for your contributions. And you know what, bro? You seem like you're in a fantastic place. Sky's the limit. I'm always down to work. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for coming on, my brother. Thank you. So, so we're going to peace out like this. I'm your boy, Bless. My co-host, let me know. Booyah. The infamous Crazy Eddie, <laughs> OG of the city, 514 <laughs> Productions. You know what it is. My glasses are, my glasses <laughs> and this is the Moment of Truth Podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, peace.